Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. I'm out here on the deck where these hot pepper seedlings have been enjoying a little afternoon sun. Sorry it's been so long since the last episode, but today I'm back with lots of updates on the 2021 growing season. On today's agenda, updates on our seedlings and preparations for outdoor growing. Also, neighborhood construction noises. It's that time of year. Let's get started. Last month, we made plans for our first road trip since the pandemic started. The seedlings were looking pretty good, so I felt comfortable leaving for a week to visit family because the plants were being cared for by our neighbor Susan, an incredible gardener who also hosts our annual neighborhood plant sale. By the way, if you're in the Twin Cities area, this year's plant sale is May 22nd, 2021. There will be three hot pepper growers with a wide selection of varieties, and we hope to see you there. If you want more info, I'll provide a link in the description. The day before we left on our trip, I used Fischner liquid to give the plants a little boost. I mixed it with water at an 8 to 1 ratio and added about a pint to each tray of seedlings. I'll do that again before they're transplanted outdoors. Hope you won't mind a barely more than a minute travelogue, cause here it comes. Our first indoor dining experience in over a year was french fries at the Belvedere Oasis on the Illinois Turnpike. We were on our way to visit my big sister in Fort Wayne, Indiana. While we were in my hometown, I took the opportunity to stop by Coleman Avenue. My grandparents were the first to build on this street, so the city named it after them. Here, my grandfather had a big vegetable garden where he grew the hot Hungarian wax peppers he loved back in his native Austria-Hungary. I couldn't find a photo of his garden, but here are my grandparents along with all my siblings. I'm the youngest, and this photo was taken several years before I was born. That's my sister Sally sitting in between Grandma and Grandpa Coleman. Then it was down to Ohio for my father-in-law's 102nd birthday. He's a D-Day vet who still lives by himself on the farm in the house he built with bricks he made himself. And as if getting a Seven Pot Club sweatshirt wasn't enough birthday fun, there was a surprise visit from a large four-legged friend. Yep. He's probably about 26 oh. years old. Wow. Boy. I've been here since I touched a horse. Well, he's a good oh, one for you to pet. Yeah. 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 Let me get on him. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something to see. We came home to much work. I needed to make room in our tightly packed garage, and a lot of that space was taken up by last year's potting soil. Last fall, my genius solution for winter storage was to dump the soil into paper lawn bags. Seemed like a great plan until it was time to move them in the spring. As soon as I jostled a bag, it ruptured and dumped its contents onto the garage floor. The bags had rotted wherever they touched each other, and it was a huge job to collect all the soil and dump it into a big pile on the driveway. I got a nice big tarp to protect it until I'm ready to start potting. The next morning, I was startled to find something bony peeking out from under that big blue tarp. I knew this creepy display was the work of Bill from next door. He's the neighborhood merry prankster, always placing strange objects in neighbors' yards to see if they'll notice. That gave me a good chuckle. Then I emptied out the ceramic pots, which were still filled with soil. Some of these were very hard to dump because they were so densely packed with roots. I credit that to my use of Fischner Organic Fish Manure Humus Compost, both in my ground beds and in pots. I'm well stocked for the upcoming season. I'm also pleased to be one of the first to try their latest product, Fischner Organic Potting Soil Mix. The first potting soil mix with Fischner already mixed in. But wait, there's another organic fertilizer in the mix this year. As usual, I'm relying mostly on Fischner, but I've also agreed to try out Sustain products, organic fertilizers made right here in Minnesota from aerobically composted turkey litter. I also plan on doing a fish versus fowl fertilizer test this season. Stay tuned. Time to check back in on how things are going in the basement. These plants are itching to get outside, and that will start happening later this week when I begin hardening the plants I'll be taking to the plant sale. I'm going to cut back next year, and this time, I really mean it. Maybe. I had a request to go over my lighting setup, so here goes. First, we have lights that cover two trays. Here's a Sansi 100-watt floodlight, 
then a Viper Spectra XS1000 running at about 75% intensity. Then I have two Viper Spectra P600s running at full intensity. Next, a Sansi 70 watt covering the tray in the middle of the row, followed by two Atrium Lighting Hydra 1000s running at about 80% intensity. Around the corner, there are four Sansi 60 watt lights, one per tray. Sansi uses the same design for their garage lights, which is how I plan on using them when not needed for plant duty. Finally, four Sansi 70 watt lights, one per tray. The total power consumption of all these lights is about 800 watts. You know, I think I've finally overcome my glass addiction, grow light acquisition syndrome. I'm pretty well equipped and won't be acquiring any more in the near future. I've been asked a lot about hardening off. The three trays in my office are just steps away from the deck. Since the end of April, I've been taking them outside most days for some sun, then bringing them back indoors each evening. I've increased the time a little each day, and now they stay out for several hours each day. They'll be well prepared when it's time to relocate outdoors. But it's very inconvenient to shuttle the basement plants outside and back, so I've been waiting until nighttime temps stay consistently above 50 degrees Fahrenheit at night inside the closed garage. That should be true in a couple of days. I keep this little Bluetooth thermometer in the garage. It records temps continuously, and I can download that info into an app to see how cold it's getting at night. Some people in Minnesota start hardening when nighttime temps are much cooler, but I don't see the point in acclimating them to temps they'll never experience until the end of the growing season. I'll first harden the seedlings I'm taking to the plant sale, which is held about a week before I begin outdoor planting. I start at about 20 minutes full sun and basically double that every day. In the coming week, I'll start working the ground beds, removing last year's plants and adding amendments. More about that in the next grow season update. Today's shout out is to Peter Avioli, who is nice enough to send us his pepper lime finishing salt infused with chocolate seven pot peppers. I don't have the details on his secret process, but it retains full seven pot flavor without the heat overpowering the salt and lime. If you want more heat, add more pepper flex. Ingenious and delicious. Thanks, Peter. The tag says no thanks are necessary, but I beg to differ. My feedback, one of the best flavor balancing acts ever. Bravo. If you enjoy our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell to be notified when we post new episodes. Check out all our 7Pot Club logo and hot pepper related apparel and other merch at 7pot.club slash merch. If you'd like a free 7Pot Club membership card and stickers, get the details at 7pot.club slash card. And for even more 7Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For 7Pot Club, I'm Rob.